EU sounds alarm over Ukraine-Russia tensions. This is from our topic report. Russian nuclear bombers warships descend on Ukraine as EU warns of world war threats. And our top story, our top link that we're gonna gonna feature here is from the Sun.uk. Russia plans major warship assault to cut off Ukraine's water supply as Putin amasses fleet in the Black Sea. From the Sun.uk. Nian Kavanaugh excerpt, Russia is planning a major warship assault to seize Ukraine's water supply, military sources claim. Ukraine military insiders believe that the most likely attack will be maritime and land assault in the south from Russian-occupied Crimea. Twelve warships during an international fleet, interfleet, I'm sorry, an interfleet, <clears throat> interfleet, moved from the Caspian Sea to, well, I'll get to that. <clears throat> Russian nuke bombers and fighter jets blitz Ukraine and massive military drills as as war fears grow. That's from the Sun.UK again. That's two in a row from the Sun. Oh, well, well. And then we get uh, from Tariq Tahir. Russia has developed nuclear bombers and fighters in a show of de deployed. They, they have developed them, but long ago. Deployed nuclear bombers and fighters in a show of strength as fears of war with Ukraine mount. Video of exercise ordered by Vladimir Putin shows aerial strike training on a mock enemy as Russian troops continue to mass on the border. <clears throat> EU warns spark could set off escalation at Ukraine borders. ABC News <clears throat> from ABC News. And their excerpt, the European Union's foreign policy chief, says that in the face of the military buildup of Russian troops near the Ukraine border, it will only take a spark to set off a confrontation. EU estimates 150,000 Russian troops near Ukraine's border from Washington Post. Despite the developments, Borrell says after a virtual meeting with the ER of the EO foreign ministers that for the time being, there is no move in the field of more sanctions to be imposed on Russia. Kiev says all signs, all sides reaffirmed commitment to ceasefire in eastern Ukraine after talks. That's from todayonline.com. From Yahoo News, we have leaked Ukraine defense memo reveals scope of Russia's aggression. And Axios, this is U.S. ambassador refuses to leave Russia despite Kremlin warning. The United States ambassador to Russia is refusing to leave the country after the Kremlin advised him to return home following new Biden administration sanctions. Two sources briefed on the situation tell Axios. Now, that excerpt is not in line with the headlines, but that happens. So Russia has been holding last-minute military exercise near commercial shipping lanes in the Black Sea that threatened to strangle Ukraine's economy, according to an internal document from Ukraine's Ministry of Defense reviewed by Axios. Okay. World War III fears. Macron calls for red lines on Russia as Putin sends troops to border. The Europhile French president... Europhile? <laughs> okay. The uh, Europhile French press. Oh, wait, who's this by? It's feed proxy. And this is Express.uk. Okay. The Europhile French president insisted that countries must be ready to impose sanctions in case of unacceptable behavior, referring to Vlad Vladimir Putin's warmongering actions in the Ukraine. In Ukraine, long standing Russian president has sent thousands of troops, tanks, and other heavy weapons in Ukraine's eastern border as a tentative 2015 ceasefire looks likely to. End. What do they want from us? This is from The Guardian. As Russian forces amass, a Ukrainian frontier town feels fear and despair. And this is written by Oksana Gretes, Gretes, Gretsenko Marinka. Vera Vasova stands by her house holding a local newspaper. The front page headline says Russia is bringing tanks to the eastern Ukrainian front. What do they want from us? Why are they dragging those tanks here? What, well, the reason that they're doing it is because Ukraine is falling under a Western orbit. And you can't have Ukraine fall under a Western orbit, especially given the history of Ukraine. So a little bit more into this story here, because this is my top story here. All right. Well, okay. Ukraine's military insiders believe that the most likely attack will be a maritime and land assault in the south from Russian Crimea. We estimate one of the Russian scenarios could be an amphibious hit and air assault from occupied Crimea to seize water supply facilities in South Ukraine to provide water to Crimea. 
I just want to remind you what the situation here is when we look at the 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 image here of Crimea. And there you see Crimea. That's Russia up here. Okay. Here we go. Here's a better picture. See this? Russia. See that uh, Russia? Russia. Russia has access to the Black Sea here, but it has vital ports in here, and it needs to be able to go into the Black Sea from those ports with ease. And it does not need the West to have a significant land power, land possession, or land occupation, in, in essence, uh, in the middle of the Black Sea, <coughs> which is a, a vital waterway for Russia. So... As a nation state, Russia cannot abide the West being there. So that's what's going on, folks. This is just the reality of power, as I'm going to say over and over again for the story, to try to, drill, to try to drill it into your heads. As nation states go, Russia has no choice but to assure that Ukraine doesn't become in inevitably where, where, where the West would inevitably want it to become down the road, a NATO power. Once it becomes part of NATO, that prevent that presents a real existential threat to Russia. I'm not countenancing the Russian nation state. I'm just saying the, the bellicose language used by everybody and the moralisms used by everybody, all of it just conceals the, the, the cold, hard reality of power that the Russian nation state cannot abide this. Can't abide it. Just can't. <laughs> 